Hi. I'm Stephen Shook. I manage um, Bioenergy Australia, which is a government industry forum in Australia, which um, fosters the development of biomass for heat power and transportation fuels. Um, bioenergy is a f form of indirect solar energy, whereby um, atmospheric carbon dioxide combines with sunlight through a process called photosynthesis to produce something called biomass. And that biomass can be used for a range of energy products. It can be used for heat, power, transportation fuels, and also bio-based um, products. Globally, um, renewable energy provides about 13% of the planet's um, total energy supplies. And of that 13%, 10 percentage points would be bioenergy in its different forms. Um, globally, just in terms of modern bioelectricity, um, provides about 52,000 megawatts of capacity, which is way more than the Australia's total coal-fired power industry. So it's a very sophisticated, mature technology at the one end of the scale. Um, biomass can also be used for liquid transportation fuels. Um, it can be um, used to produce um, fuels such as um, bioethanol or biodiesel um, for basically p um, displacing um, petroleum products. Um, bioelectricity um, is basically carbon dioxide neutral. And one advantage of it is that it basically can provide what's known as baseload power. So instead of having to be dispatched by nature, such as wind energy or solar energy, when you're reliant on the wind blowing or the sun shining, basically the inherent energy stored in the biomass can be retrieved um, via combustion or gasification or a process called um, pyrolysis to recover that energy. Another quite common form of bioenergy is um, something called biogas, basically landfills where most of Australia's garbage is disposed. Um, that um, the gas that percolates out of those um, landfills can be captured and can be used for running reciprocating spark ignition engines, for instance. Um, the methane that would otherwise percolate to the atmosphere is quite a potent greenhouse gas, so there's a huge merit in converting that to energy. So um, bioenergy um, can have a, a very significant part to play in Australia's energy economy. At the present time, only 0.9% of Australia's electricity is provided by um, biomass um, that equates to about 867 megawatts of capacity. Most of that is in the sugar industry using bagasse, which is the crushed residue from sugar um, production. Another big area is also using sewage um, at sewage treatment plants for recovering the biogas. So it's a, it's a very diverse area and um, it's, it's quite exciting. And I guess the main thing is that it's carbon dioxide neutral and it's regarded such as under the Kyoto Protocol. Thank you. Well, well geothermal energy has been uh, used or providing uh, energy mostly in the form of heat around the world for centuries. And uh, we've even been using geothermal energy to produce electricity now for uh, close to 100 years. So the, whole, the idea of geothermal energy and using it for, you know, for human needs is not new. But what we've been doing in Australia, I guess, is, is is quite new. We're looking at ways of using the geothermal resource in ways that it hasn't been used before, um, not in a commercial sense. And we're also looking to use geothermal energy in the, in the fairly traditional way that it is being used around the world. So we're doing a range of things. Uh, with enhanced geothermal systems or the, the new hot rocks technology, uh, we now have uh, many companies, in fact, in fact, I think we have about 54 companies with exploration licenses uh, around the uh, across the country and to do a, an EGS project or a hot rock project you're drilling a very deep well to start with it's an injection well and then you're fracturing granite underground um, f between four and five kilometers using very high temperature water finding where that water goes and then drilling another hole and uh, that that becomes your production well so then in, in effect you're circulating water between those two wells bringing very hot water up, up under pressure uh, and uh, just driving a traditional steam turbine. And then at the other end of the scale, we're just taking the heat out of the ground, or we're looking to just take the heat out of the ground, and to drive energy efficiency processes. So in, in industry, um, heating and cooling, we think we can produce enough energy to run the air conditioning systems in uh, multi-storey buildings, in hospitals and in universities. In fact, one of our companies, Green Rock Energy in Western Australia, is looking to provide the first, or looking to build the first project, and they'll be providing enough energy to drive the entire air conditioning system 
at the University of Western Australia. Now, supporting the industry, we have uh, a world-class research facility, uh, a, 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 I suppose, research industry. We have uh, the University of Queensland working on improving the efficiency of the above-ground power systems. We have the University of Adelaide looking at, produce, at, at improving the way in which we create the under, underground reservoir, improving the way we understand the underground geology and how we make that, uh, that reservoir more efficient. And we have the CSIRO and the University of Western Australia working on the direct use applications as, as, uh, as they're trialling now at, uh, at the University of Western Australia. So we have a very varied approach and we really are amongst the world leaders in, in, um, in these areas now. So Australia is very well positioned not only to provide energy for its own needs and uh, the industry predicts that we can be producing about 2,000 megawatts by 2020 um, or we, we could have built 2,000 megawatts of installed capacity by 2020, but also that we could provide our expertise and, and sell our component technologies around the world for, for centuries to come because we've got to the point where there's nothing surer than uh, death and taxes and, uh, and climate change. And we are going to be in need of, um, of, of a lot more clean energy around the world. And Australia has a leadership position in a number of the technologies now, but we very much consider in the geothermal industry that we, we are amongst those world leaders. So we look forward to um, increasing our activities, but we do need to negotiate with government. We do need clearer uh, policy directions from government. We don't have a, a settlement on a carbon pricing regime in Australia. Without that settlement, we are not likely to have any forward movement in the clean energy sector. Uh, we have a renewable energy target, which provides some support to new projects, but we have very short, um, a, a great deal of shortcomings with the funding that governments provide to the clean energy sector. And if that's not addressed, the industry uh, will not progress at the rate that it's needed to, it needs to progress in order to meet the climate change and energy demand uh, targets in the future. So we in the geothermal industry are very much true believers. Uh, we're backed by a very strong research effort. We know, what we, uh, we know what we're doing. We know what we need to know more about in order to improve what we do and re reduce the price of, of, of electricity from geothermal over time. We need a lot of uh, improvements in the way we drill the deep wells and the times that it takes to drill the deep wells. We need improvements in the way we understand the underground reservoirs. But we have great confidence that working with the research industry in Australia, that we'll, um, we'll get there in the not too distant future. So we have uh, a great deal of confidence. We have a great product. We have a great resource in Australia. Australia has the oldest um, granites closest to the surface anywhere in the world. We have a continent under compression. So the place to find out how to do hot rocks technology is definitely in Australia. My name is Alan Major from 10X Energy. We're the first and foremost tidal energy developer in Australia. We're developing sites in three states around the country with a pipeline of over 700 megawatts of tidal energy potential. I'm here to talk about the future of marine energy in Australia, uh, specifically wave and tidal energy the opportunities for employment growth and the opportunities for export earnings that uh, the, these two forms of energy generation bring into the mix. Uh, marine energy, as with all of the so-called alternate uh, renewable energy sources in Australia, are essential to the uh, energy or electricity generation mix. They uh, de-risk what is currently a, a very risky uh, industry, the energy, electricity generation industry, the more, or the broader the range of generation profiles and fuel profiles that are in the generation mix, the lower the risk becomes and the opportunity for holding the price of electricity down to a more realistic level. Recently there have been some uh, significant press around the increase in electricity prices, particularly in the eastern states of Australia. Um, and this has been attributed to climate change. A lot of that is actually to do with the failure of um, expenditure on capital expenditure over the past five years, and that's beginning to catch up with the industry. Our job as uh, energy developers is to put more energy into the mix and drive that price back down to real realistic levels.